we're going to talk about the the caterpillar against <laughs> the, you know the, the big Goliath against oh, yeah. David here. Yeah. Um, so I mean, real briefly, because I want to go back to like the history, but yeah. um, caterpillar. I guess they wanted to say they're not suing you. They brought a legal action. Yeah. Uh, technically, it's with like the patent trade okay. office. So, because um, you have a patent on cat and cloud, and it has the word cat in it, correct? Yeah, we have a trademark among a number of classes for coffee shops, coffee, uh, apparel, merchandise. Um, and specifically, they have brought legal action against us to try to cancel our Class 25 trademark, which has to do with uh, apparel. Like, okay. Yeah, and it's just a lot of stuff we brand, so it... Like anything with like an apparel, stickers, mugs? Uh, specifically apparel oh, related right. to like shirts, sweatshirts, okay. boots, socks, shoelaces, shoes. Yeah, all the... Yeah, we don't sell shoes, no, shoelaces, shoes. or <laughs> that's socks. That's next year, no. Yeah. Um, that's crazy, so like they're... I, you know, okay, no, I want to get into that soon. We'll go back to that, the, the <laughs> ridiculousness of it. But let's go back to... Okay, how long is Cat and Cloud, like when you opened your Portola location, how yep. long ago was that? Yeah, we opened our Portola location in October 2016. Okay. But we'd actually found, like, started the company in May 2015 okay. and had kind of like an online business and the podcast started then. Oh, that's okay. I didn't know that. So, and you kind of came out of, so you have, um, who's your other two co-founders? So, Chris Baca and Jared Truby. Okay. And myself. So, how did this happen? How did this, like, coffee empire start? Yeah, we've, we've, the three of us have worked in coffee for a really long time and in previous positions we just saw ways that where, um, essentially, like, our vision for Cat and Cloud when we started it was that we want to change the way the world does business. And specifically in service industries and service industry business, we feel like there's a lot of things that we could do um, for our company and our employees that aren't being done by the majority of businesses. And we just thought we could see a better way to build a company than maybe what we'd experienced in the past. Can you tell me like what one of those things are? What's what you do, what do you do differently? Yeah, so we offer full-time employees get 4 weeks of paid vacation a year, which in service industry, you know, it's just this really rough thing where people want to survive, they have to work. You know, they're only getting paid for when they work and they they're not able to take time off, so they yeah. stress and they don't take time off, they burn out, and it's just not conducive to Li to, to like living well or taking care of yourself. Yeah. So let's go back. So you, you have this idea of creating this company. What is like the first steps? Like was was it? It was always to create a retail correct place, but at first it was just an online and a podcast. Yeah. The first iteration was just the creation of the podcast to kind of discuss even amongst ourselves some of the ideas we had about what we could do differently and to create an, an online shop just to see if people were interested in the ideas we had. Um, and it was just really cool to see even from the beginning the support that we received um, you know, from kind of what we talked about on the podcast and, um, and just to see that there was a desire from a lot of people that we interacted with for us to move forward and create kind of like a, a real concept around it. So not just the podcast, not just online, but you were, and I think it was, was it Chris, maybe that was you know, very kind of world renowned, known for like the yeah. barista skills. The rock star, barista rock stars, definitely. It, it, yeah. <laughs> but how, how, like, how do, what kind of world is that? Like, do you guys have like competitions? Oh, or? yeah. So, dude, so there's a, there's a US and a world barista championship. Huh. And Chris Baca has placed second in the US twice. Wow. Um, earlier in his career, and Jared placed in the top 10 as really? well. So, at the upper echelons of the <laughs> coffee competition world. Didn't we have a competition here in Santa Cruz, like at the like where the looker is? Yeah, we did. Two thousand twelve, and Jared Truby won that. I did. Okay. Chris, yeah, Chris Blocky did not compete. Oh really? Okay. So, <laughs> so is that like a, a some contention? Like, if I was competing, I would have won you, Jared. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna stay out of that one. But, <laughs> I know. Uh... Okay, we'll have to ask him. We should have him call in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. I think it's his. It was his daughter's birthday, so Jared's probably not gonna call. Him. But yeah. you know, the really cool thing about competition is just how much it requires you to dive in and like work on your skill and that's really I think a big part of like they've always been willing to go above and beyond what was normally asked of them to yeah. get better at what they do and you know they and we all continue to do that at Cat and Cloud and we even yeah uh, I would say we even have somebody who's going to compete in the roasting the coffee roasting U.S. competition oh wow so, cool so you, you uh, finally 2016 you actually opened the location um, I remember being there that day. I remember the video I took. Um, it seemed like from day one, you just had so much support from the community. 
Um, how does a, I don't know, I'm kind of thinking, how does a company do that? How do you, because I, mean, I feel like you can do it very organically and naturally. It's not like you're not paying Facebook to get you likes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, how do you, yeah, how do you get that community? Yeah, I think it starts from how you hire and how you train people. And again, with our vision to change how, you know, our vision to change how the world does business and our mission is to leave people happier than we found them. We kind of uh, interview according to kind of the values that we want to have and then training people who really want to be in service. We're not, you know, it, everything that you get with us is authentic. It's not, um, you know, it's not a show or anything. And um, is we were lucky to find amazing people who were, who were able to like provide amazing experiences for our guests. And they're always smiling. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Yeah. It makes me yeah, smile. And yeah. It's just, it's been amazing to see like since we kind of opened up and, you know, talk, this is what we're about. And, you know, we do the four weeks paid, paid vacation. We do 10% profit sharing for all of our retail employees. Um, we do like a hundred dollar health stipend a month, you know, just, just things to really take care of people in a way that Chris Jared and I wanted to be taken care of. I think goes a long way just in creating a company where everyone feels invested and that really shows in interactions with guests and I think particularly in Santa Cruz we want to help I think improve the service culture here and um, like show them be a model for what it can be. That's what I think you've done that because it's like I bet there's like you know envy for what you've created <laughs> yeah because like you know I mean most places I mean I think Santa Cruz were pretty cool and everybody's pretty decent but I don't know, just like the, the model you've created of like, you go there, um, I mean, I, and I just told, you know, Charles before, you know, the show came on, I go there every day for avocado toast and a coffee. I mean, every day. And if it got, you know, if it's too late in the day, I know it's like, I, I came too late, but, but in general, and like, even when you don't have avocado toast because it's too late in the day, I still feel good because you're, you know, your employees, well, you, you joke about it and stuff <laughs> and it's like a great time and then I get the, um, the goat cheese sandwich yeah. instead. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's people who want to be there and they yeah. enjoy service. And they stay there. Yeah. Like and your turnover is like, I feel like the same people are yeah. all the time. Yeah. yeah. That's our goal. And I mean, I like going to coffee shops where you can build a relationship with the people who work there. And that's our goal to create that as well. So it totally works. So you have Portola. So that was your first one. Yeah. Um, I actually, I wanted to buy that lot right next to Portola. Please do. Will, some, will someone? Well, they said someone's bought it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard Yeah, it. and I was like, just when I found out about it, Chris told me there's a lot. It's like, it would be perfect for events and stuff, but... Um, I hear, yeah, I hear it's going to be yeah, something cool. I, 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 they won't tell me uh, either. As soon as I found out, Chris told me about it. I, I went over there and was like, nope, sold. But, um, <laughs> so you have that one. Then you you opened an Abbott Square. Um, yeah, with, uh, with, with Companion, Companion. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, what's your relationship with Companion? Like, you did you guys work there at Companion at some point? Or? Yeah, so, oh man, this is before our brick and mortar location at Portola. Yeah. We did a pop up at Companion was, every yeah. Monday because they were closed on Monday. Yeah. So, for like two um, months or something, right? Yeah, or, yeah. Yeah, the Aaron and her husband that own Companion have been really amazing supporters since the beginning. And yeah, they, they kind of gave us that opportunity to show um, what we could do for people. Uh, before our, our right. first location opened. So you did that one, and then, so that's two locations. Yeah. Then you have um, Aptos. Yeah, Aptos. Next week. Yeah, that's been, you know, a year in the making, and really excited just about Aptos Village. Like, I love areas that are real walkable and create that kind of community where you don't need a car to get everywhere, and Aptos Village will be that. And Perfect. so next week, but yeah, it's always a moving target with inspections, yeah. but sometime next chance. week yeah, keep yeah. an eye on like our instagram and definitely find um, out. social media and we'll let people know so then aptos and then at, at some point there's going to be the <laughs> west side too right yeah definitely and that's where you actually roast near coffee too right correct yeah our roastery's in uh the building like 719 swift okay um i love that area kind of across from where kelly's like everything like the swift you know you got humble sea venus spirits yeah. now you guys it's like yeah i feel like just you coming in there just makes such a perfect trek back there. Yeah, so, we're yeah. really excited to be part of that neighborhood too. And yeah. yeah, like I said, that's where I spend a lot of our days with our roastery team there. And we're going to be on the corner of that 719 Swift perfect. building. And once we complete Aptos, we're going to start working on Swift. And we're going to do a little bit different model there where we'll have like a full breakfast okay. oh. in a kitchen. Cool. So we're really stoked to bring um, like an awesome breakfast place to the west side. Completely. You know, I know there's a couple there, but that would be nice to have the other option. Yeah. Um, okay, so you're growing, you're building, I mean, you're, you're doing this amazing thing in our town, but then a year ago, you get this, you know, action, legal action <laughs> against you. Why is this so ridiculous? Because 
Cut. They're they're. They, you know, the other word cat, you know, C-A-T, yeah. but um, you're not going to change your name to K-A-T <laughs> or something. <laughs> no, I sent a picture to Jared of like a, um, the, a caterpillar and cloud, but um, right. but um, it, it's like, you know, there's not there, it's a feline, it's a caterpillar. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. And I mean, when you, when you talk about infringing on trademarks, there has to be, you like the, the person pursuing the action has to show that there is like confusability. Yeah. To the to a normal person that uh, you know that would affect their ability to understand which brand is which, yeah. and I think that's so far fetched in this case that I don't understand why it's I don't understand why it's worth their time or are they just def they are they just, they have to legally defend themselves oh for a certain passive so they're obviously not going to targets you know Cat and Jack yeah exactly yeah. it's like if it was really about defending their economic interest then. To me, it seems like going after someone that sells much more clothing than we do. You know, maybe we sell like yeah, $50,000 yeah. of clothing in a year or something. You know, it's like Cat and Jack, I'm sure, sells millions of dollars of clothing. Yeah. Or the Cat in the Hat. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure there's so, a, a thousand other cat <laughs> named businesses. That, yeah, and, the, and the cat, uh, like their clothing is not like their main business. Yeah, it's right. like these trucks or tractors yeah. or whatever. Yeah, and they talk about boots in yeah. their like, formal response to us. So we don't. We don't sell boots. We don't make any boots. So I don't think there could be any confusion there. So, you know, this has been going on for a year. There's legal fees um, that are, you know, ridiculous for a small company that you have to take yeah, this up. Um, this is not, there's no like, it's going to end on July 15th or no, something. No, no, uh, the schedule for the trial is into potentially the middle of next year. Okay. That is crazy. So you have to get lawyers, all that stuff. And so that's why I love that. For one thing, just the community got together and yep. did like the change dot um, dot org, like the, the uh, petition. Yeah, petition. That was cool. Yeah, it's like going up to like twenty. No, the goal is like twenty five thousand. That's already like fifteen something, <laughs> and like shut like a week or something. Yeah. There's a um, a GoFundMe. I call you look. I think if you look at this Cat and Cloud Coffee, you'll see the GoFundMe to support their needs. I love looking on the side and seeing supporters, all the community that's just yeah put their time in. And we it. had we had an all staff meeting last night at Aptos. That, yeah. um, that was really great. And just to hear from our staff about the support that we've received from the communities, like a number of people told stories um, just about people coming in and, and supporting us. So yeah. it's it's been really incredible. It's it's been very annoying to have to deal with but it, it's been really incredible, the, the community in Santa Cruz and how everybody's come out to support us. What I find, yeah, I, mean, I think that's so true because for a whole year, nobody's known about it yeah. besides you guys. And you guys have been grinding along, doing your thing. Um, and But when like now that it's out in the world, you're getting all this like, love put on you guys. Yeah, and yeah. people are really like really supportive. It is, and it's, it's really great for us to see and for everyone who works at Cat Cloud to see the kind of impact that we're able to have in the both in the coffee industry and and in larger business like you know to our vision to change how the world does business it's like uh, you know if there's something that comes out of this hopefully there's there's more people that see maybe what we're trying to do and and are maybe able to take what we're doing and adopt it in what they're doing just to, to help kind of spread maybe a more sustainable way of doing business for for people and employees and just like Luba talked about earlier is that this Santa Cruz and California it's tough for people to just to stay and live here and so the more the better that we can do as local businesses to help provide for our employees um you know i think the better santa cruz is yeah okay well thank you so much but never you know take the avocado toast off your menu <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and how could people help you like where do they go what website should they go maybe to find out more about cat yeah cloud? definitely you can so our website's cat uh yeah. Right, catandcloud.com. They can go to our GoFundMe to check out kind of more about what the the Caterpillar action is about, and really help would just be you know sharing it on social media. We're just really trying to get the message out there in the media to to really help remind Caterpillar that hopefully they're better than this and that it's just not necessary. We can go. We can both go our own ways and yeah, call it a and, day and focus on our real businesses. You we'll know? still buy your tractor. <laughs> yeah, let it go. Totally. yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Charles Jack from Cat and Cloud Coffee, and um, I'll I'll be over there in about an hour and a half. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> thanks a lot. Okay, so we're gonna have Chelsea.